You sure we should have taken the slaughterhouse? I've told you. We can't take any chances with the legal aid people now when you stop worrying. God, I thought it would look more than that, did you? Anyway, it should be safe enough in the wardrobe. Yeah. Stick the rest of it in that bag, will you, love? Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. You OK? I thought you were the Crosby's come back. I've been going off my head here. Well, listen, why don't you come to town with me? Yeah, yeah, why not? What if it's them? What am I going to say? Well, you're going to have to tell them sometime. Kids, semi-detached suburban. Well, the car we pick up today is going to say fast, powerful, dynamic. Not like you. Just get in, Batman. <laughs> now then. Hiya. Hiya. Right. Off to spend your winnings, eh? Uh, well, yeah, just going to have a look at a few cars there. Uh, not flash, you know. Well, nice one. We'll bring us a Porsche back, won't you? Yeah. If you're good. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh, we agreed we weren't going to tell anyone about yeah, the win. Well, well, I might have just mentioned it in passing, like, only to Sinbad, though. Didn't tell him how much. <laughs> What'd you take me for? Anyway, you're not exactly the world's greatest to keep a bit of gossip to yourself, hey, madam. you haven't said a word to anyone. Good. Well, let's just keep it that way, eh? All right, kids. Just looking out to get some milk. Look, uh, if you're really good, I'll get you some sweets before I take you back to school, eh? What about a dirty great big bar of chocolate? Well, right, well, I'll just have to scuff it myself, won't I? Yes, birthday letters. When I can find well, the diggers hidden them. Don't say I didn't ask him. Eh? Listen, let's put we'll get to reading the letters out here. Come on, Lee, you don't think I was gonna. We are, we found them. First Kirk Lee, I was only putting your label back in. Hello, Kirk. He's five today, and his mum and sister have sent in a little picture of him. Do you wanna come to the shop with Daddy, babe? Oh, what's that with Leo? Gems? Hmm. Hiya, love. Come to spend your share of the winnings, eh? What winnings? Don't be giving me that. You told me yesterday you and your Rosie in your drunken state. Boozy pair. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. Mind you, you're playing things a bit close to your chest as to how much they'd won like. Still, I suppose that's a sign that they did all right, eh? Oh, yeah, they did all right. Why haven't they given you the decent bung of the cash? Well, if you can call 500 quid decent. Well, I wouldn't tear me nose up at that. You might if you knew they'd won 100 grand. A uh hun? -huh. You're joking, 100 grand? I'm not exactly in the mood for laughing after being given a poxy 500 quid. It does seem a bit tight, doesn't it? 100 grand, eh? Mind you, money does funny things to people you know, love. The more they get, the more they want to keep. Tell you what, if I were you, I'd get round there and demand a decent cut. And after all, you're our family, aren't you? Yeah, I might just do that. Here, I'm 20p short. You are? Oh, I'm sorry, love. There you go. Hope you get yourself sorted out. After all, this is the kind of thing that can split families up, isn't it? Believe me, though, love, sometimes you're better off without it. Yeah. Oh, and listen, it's still a secret, so don't go telling anyone, eh? My lips are... Trust me, love. Mm, see ya. Ta-da, now. Hundred grand a jammy gets. Oh, hey. Not gonna do your Mike Tyson act again, are you? Sorry about that, Ryan. I suppose I did get carried away. Mind you, you were a bit lippy. Well, let's just forget about it, eh? Nice to see you out and about again, anyway. Cheers. Hey, does he hear about the banks' win on the lottery? No. A hundred thousand pounds. Oh, buddy. Straight up to be able to splash out a bit now, won't they? Doing a bit of that yourself, aren't you? How are the runaways? At the sound. Oh, and uh, thanks again for bringing them back, Ron. God, 
doesn't bear thinking about what could have happened if I hadn't spotted them. Hope they've had a good talking to you off their dad. Yeah. You know your trouble, don't you, Mick? You're too soft. Yeah. couple of weeks it'll be our own little daughter's geared in this lot, won't it? You're determined this baby's gonna be a girl, aren't you? Well, I'll tell you what, if it's a lad, he's gonna look tafted after, after frocks I've bought for him, isn't he? What's this? A holiday. Look at the face on you. Oh, yeah, it's Carrie Grant's, isn't it? <laughs> hey, listen, if you've got time, we can go look at some flats after if you want. Well, actually, if you don't mind, I think I'd better get on with this. What is it? Your speech? Listen. When he lays next to me in bed at night, sometimes I close my eyes and imagine what would happen if he just stopped breathing. And all I could hear was the clock ticking by the bed. It would all stop then, I'd be safe. The girls would be safe, we'd be free. The beatings would stop, we'd have our lives back. But then I open my eyes and he's still breathing and I know as soon as he wakes up, it'll start happening again. And then I wish it was me that would stop breathing, and I hate myself more because I'd be leaving the girls with him, and I know I could never do that. So I just carry on taking the beatings, hiding the bruises, telling the girls, Daddy doesn't mean it, he loves us really, but I don't know how much longer I can take it. Is that the first time you've ever written down what he did to you? It's not about me. What was it about then? It's from this woman called Kathy. She's got two little girls. This man she lives with, Colin, has been beating her for a while and there's no one she can go to. She's desperate, so I thought I'd write to her and just hope that she reads it before it's too late. And what are you going to tell her? I'm going to tell her to do what I should have done the first day Trevor ever laid a finger on me to take the girls, get out, and go to the nearest refuge. You know what, Mr Sweeney, to be? I'm proud of you. Listen, uh, I'm just going to bob round to mix. Leave you to get out with that. Not a soul in sight! They're probably out spending their share of the winnings. Uh -oh. What a shame. I'm quite looking forward to a celebration. Never mind, this will keep till they get back. Oh, David, when we're on our world trip, we're going to leave all this behind. I can't wait. <laughs> Rachel! Rachel, we're back! Rachel! She must have popped out. It's like the Marie Celeste. <laughs> Never mind. Good news keeps. I'll just pop this in the fridge. David? Yes? We're rich. We're rich! <laughs> <laughs> sure go, Jan. Oh, yeah. I just wondered if you two fancy go on the pitches tonight. No, oh, thanks. You're gonna have to get off to school sometime, innit? Oh, I'll just get ready for work. Leo. What's all this? A peace offering? It didn't work, mate. I don't know what else to do. I tried everything you said. He just doesn't want to know. 
This morning, I went to Tucker's labeling. He nearly jumped out of his skin. You should have seen him. The lad's scared to death of me, and who can blame him, Sin? Yeah, well, come on, Mick. You know you never do anything like that. It's just a one-off, that's all. But I can't make Leo see that. I mean, what if the school find out and tell the social services? They'll take them away from me, just like you said. Right. Let's get this sorted. Leo? Yeah? Same bad, mate. Can I have a word? Come, Come here, I want you to have a word with your dad. Come here, mate. Come on. Come here, babe. Listen, son. I've been a right divvy, haven't I? Look. I just want you to know that I'm really, really sorry for hitting you the other day. I, just, I didn't know what I was doing. I had a lot on my mind, you know that, but it was wrong what I did. And I want you to know that it will never, ever happen again. Never? I promise. Cross my heart and hope today. Even if I don't do me sums? Even if you don't do your sums. Dad, I haven't done them. <laughs> we'll have to go through them later on then, won't we? Before we were gone to the pictures? Yeah. After you've done your sons and been to school. Come here, Skelly. Cheers, mate. Should have brought me violin. <laughs> the banks. Oh, Jean, brand new set of gardening tools, right? And you know, we really must decide how much we're going to give Max and Patsy. And the children. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And Rachel. I mean, she's practically one of the family now. Oh, there you are. We were wondering where you were. <laughs> we tried to phone you. There was no reply. We couldn't get in touch with Eddie or Rosie either. Guess what? We've come up on the lottery. Five numbers plus the bonus. We've Jean. really done it. Jean, at least let the poor girl get through the door. And we'd like you to have a share of the winnings. Uh, but no, 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 no. We want you to share in our good fortune. But Mrs. No, Cuffey. but it's already been decided. Absolutely. Of course, we don't know how much it is. Not until Rosie and Eddie get back. But it's going to be a pretty tidy sum. Oh, well, I <laughs> wish they'd hurry. I can't wait to open that champagne. Hey, thanks for helping us out there, Sin. I'll start the kids back at school on Monday. So you feel like you're back on planet Earth now, then, do you? I'm getting there. I'll just be glad when this Jenny business is over for good, if it ever will be. Yeah, well, she's going to court, isn't she? Yeah, what if she gets off? Nah, I'm telling you, that one will be out of your life for good, so just forget it. Yeah, that's easier said than done, especially when I'm still living here. I don't want to be anywhere near this place if she gets off. I don't want her to find me again. Listen, Sin, I'm gonna let the flat in the pizza parlor go. I'm gonna make a fresh start somewhere else for me and the kids. Well, hang on, if you do that, she's won, hasn't she? You don't have to run from me, eh? This is your home. And anyway, if you do go, when me and Mandy do eventually tie the knot, what am I gonna do for the best man? Hey, don't worry, mate. I'll make the wedding, good or no good. I just hope that when it does go to court, they lock her up for a long time. It's typical this, you know. Jackie said she'd be back from town by now. She knows I got a delivery to make. Little old lady who lives on the estate. Well, I like to do me bit for the community, you know, and... Uh, will you be all right for a sec, love? I just want to work with Pedro there. Yeah, go ahead. <sighs> oh. All right, Everard. Doesn't look like you got much work done over there. Looks more like you were on the beach the whole time. Well, joking, aren't you, Mr. D? Go, we were lucky we got an hour off at the conference. My feet didn't touch. Well, hell of a bronzer you got there. My tan very easy, got very sensitive skin. I make Judith Chalmers look like she's an albino. So, did you see the girls then? No, it wasn't some little village, you know. So, did they get back all right then? Well, Bev did, but Janice is still out there, shacked up with some waiter. Got engaged, actually. Mind you, you'd know that, wouldn't you, if you saw them there, like? Janice engaged. Go away. Mind you, she's probably onto another one by now. <laughs> oh, God. 
We should have met up with him. Sounds like I've missed all the excitement. Yeah. So you didn't see anything of him? Like? Not a glimpse, Mr. D. What's this? Out of a bottle, is it? Hey, real Mallorcan suntan, I'll have you know. I'll oh, give me the Lake District any time. You're better than in there. She just can't keep away from me, Don. <laughs> all right, Slim. Hey, I made up. Mick looks as though he's finally got himself sorted. You got your letter finished? Uh, yeah, just posted it. Hmm. Are you okay? Just hope I can do some good, that's all. Yeah, that's true. What's Oof. up? You all right? Man? Oh, my God. Oh, 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 what's, what's the matter? Are you all right? Since it started. Well, well what's that? I thought the baby, I thought it wasn't due for another two weeks. Well, I think he or she is about to put in an early appearance. Well, are you sure? It might just be the twinges. Oh, Simba, trust me, it's not twinges, it's oh, contractions. Oh, 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 right, the waters well, have just broke. Oh, my God. All right, well, just stay there. Well, all right, all right oh. just, you're all right. Wait a minute. Ron, it's baby. She's having the mandy. Come here. Oh. Just be careful. Come oh, on, my just... God. Get an ambulance, mate. Sorry. Ambulance, yeah. No, I need to go to the hospital now, quickly. Mandy, can you hang on? What? Do you want me to have it here? Oh, God, your waters haven't broken, have they? I can't even swim. I'll get him up. Oh. How about a cab? Yeah, get one of Jimmy's. I think he's out of action. Oh, God, he's never here when you need him. Simbad! I've got it. Mandy, wait there, love. Don't go away. Oh, thanks, please. All right, now, go oh, on. I'm with you. I don't know. All right. I'm with you. That's it. Just... You sure? Are you OK? Oh. oh, God, is that another one? Is it a contraction? All right, all right, all right. Just take it easy. Oh, come on, Ron! All right, then. OK. Oh, my God. I was not serious. Well, at least you'd be OK if you get a little bit peckish on the way to the Aussie, won't you? <sighs> Come on, OK. All right, man, come on. Be fine, just take it easy. You'll be fine, Doc. Come on, love, we're sorted. You'll be all right in here. Come on. Mm -hmm. All right. I need to lie down. Well, I think you better open the back doors. You what? To open the back doors. But it's full of stock. Oh, never mind your stock. Just open the back doors. Oh. Right, yeah. Oh. OK. Oh. Come on, in you go. In you go. Yeah, yeah, go. Whatever's oh, coming. Thanks, please. Cheers. Now, just wait oh. a sec. Wait a Oh, just not yourself. Oh, easy. Right, thanks, mate. Right. Right. Up you go, up you go. Oh. Got any blankets, Rob? Yeah, yeah, they're in there. Oh. And I ain't mind where you sit. There's a couple of pineapples there somewhere. You all right? You got everything, right? Right, let's go. OK. Hang on, the shop. Don't worry about it, Mr Dicko. I'll take care of it till you get back. Hey, and I'll keep the hands off your essentials, OK? Uh, yeah, OK. Right. Uh, don't worry, man. Uh, get you there on time, I promise. Just planning on what countries we're going to visit on our round the world trip. Mrs. Crosby? Mm -hmm. What is it? Good Lord! David! David! Get out of the van quickly, the banks are home! Pants, pants. I've done this before, you know. Oh, that's it. Good. Just hang on. I can't hang on. I want to push. What? What do you mean now? Simba, I want to push. Uh, right. I'll, I'll tell Ron. Just a second. Hang on. Ron, you know, look at me at ten, then. Stop the van. She's having the baby. She's what? Simba. It's not that kind of delivery, man! No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so what do you think of our new baby, then? Huh? It's a tank, isn't it? <laughs> right, for those who can afford it. It's brilliant. 500 quid might just pay for a tire on this thing. Look, no. Um, looks like I'll have to make do with an old banger for now, eh? Look, I bought the money. Yeah, well, Ron Dicko reckons you should have given me more. Ron Dicko? Well, how does he know about it? I might have mentioned it in passing, like, look, Mo, um, I know you're a bit upset about the money, but, um, well, me and Ed, we want to take you on a holiday with us. 
Walk some caravan in Skegness, you can keep it. Oh, so you don't want to join us on an all-expenses paid trip to Florida, then? Florida? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's why I like it! <laughs> <laughs> very impressive, Eddie, I must say. We've been trying to get hold of you two for ages. Uh, yeah, well, we've just been down the bank to cast a cheque for this little beauty. Well, didn't the bank want all four winners? Four? <clears throat> oh, sorry, Jean, there's only two winners. Two? What do you mean, two? There's four of us in the syndicate. There wasn't last week. Never put your money in. Pity, I know, but uh, there you go. Well, Rachel gave you our money. We left it with her. So, obviously, we had to assume that the syndicate was off. Sorry, but the money's ours, isn't it, Rose? Um, yeah. Yeah, all 100 grand of it. 100? We were going round the world. Sorry. Looks like you'll just have to make do with Bath for now. You can't do that. Sorry, Dave, I just have. This is outrageous. Huh. Our dream shattered. We are entitled to half of that money. Now, come on, you hand it over. Um, not being funny, like, but we should be getting off. Sorry. You will be. This isn't the end of the matter by any means. Half of that money is ours, and we're going to have it. Sorry, Dave. Hideous object. Ron, have you got any water? Yeah, yeah, uh, by your feet to the left. Sorry, sorry, I mean the right. And there should be a little bottle of brandy there as well. She can't drink brandy, you divvy. No fair there, it's for me. This isn't doing my heart any good, you know. And there's a box there as well. Passes it, will you? So. Thanks. And remember, you know where to come if you want a cut and blow. There you go, see it's right. Thanks. What are you doing here? I'm filling in for your other half. He's had to shoot off with that Mandy Jordash. Wants to take her to the Aussie. She nearly had the baby in there, right there next to the dog meal. Go away. I'm glad she didn't, though. Ooh, I nearly fainted the sight of blood. I had to watch casualty behind a cushion. <laughs> and hey, you, Beverly Mac. Your Ron's been giving me the third degree about Mallorca, asking me if I'd seen you. Oh, he doesn't know anything, does he? I mean, he'd kill me if he found out the truth. Of course truth. he doesn't. As far as he's concerned, I never left my hotel room. Well, you didn't really, did you? Mind you. That might have something to do with the fact that you and Janice were staying in my hotel, mightn't it? Hmm? <laughs> Ron, come here, mate. Hurry up, look. Ron, I'm a dad. You've got a little daughter, isn't she, Brill? something the previous owner asked me to organise. A condition of sale in memory of two people who died here a few years back. Oh, yes, 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 I heard about that. Terrible business, by the way. Hi, Dad. Deal, how are you? Not too bad, thanks. Well, Susanna settling in, do you tell me? Don't worry, I will. 
Perhaps have you seen this? You were living here when that poor woman and child died, weren't you? Yeah, Terry Sullivan's wife. It was awful. I'm surprised this has suddenly appeared, though. I mean, the accident must have been years ago. Oh, I was asked to arrange it to coincide with the anniversary. Morning, all. What do you reckon to this little fella, don't I? The man in Sinbad's baby. What's that? Oh, well, that's a bit morbid, isn't it? And it's just been put up. But you say this was at the request of Barry Grant? Yeah, he faxed me the details. <sighs> Terrible business, that you know. Made poor Teddy go off his head. Mm. It's a dreadful waste of young lives. Makes you realise how lucky you are to be here, doesn't it? Right, well, on that cheerful note, I better get on. Bye. See you then. Thing like that does make you appreciate what you've got. I mean, here's your mother and I fighting tooth and nail with the banks over that wretched money. I suppose we ought to be grateful we've still got our health and strength. And well, what's all this about the banks? Well, it's, uh, it's rather private, actually. I'd rather not discuss it. Well, that's very noble of you, Dad, but I think if I were in your shoes, I'd want everyone to know the full facts. Why is it they owe you money like? Uh, yeah. Well, you want to be careful who you lend your money to, Bing, because people are always less than cooperative when it comes to paying it back. We didn't actually lend them money. Dad, just tell the truth. I think people should know just how badly they treated you and Mum. Come on, Pink, you can't keep me hanging on. Well, we were in a lottery syndicate with them, and our numbers came up. And uh, now they're refusing to give us our share. Come on. How much, like? Hundred thousand pounds. A hundred thousand oh, quid? Fifty thousand each. Oh, I'm not surprised you're fuming. It's a good self and sells. Well, surely they haven't got a leg to stand on, have they? Well, we're trying to talk them round, make them see sense. <laughs> well, if it was me, I'd be making them see sense with a baseball bat. Yeah, well, perhaps there's a slightly more subtle way of approaching it. Mind you, if that fails, then we um, resort to baseball bat. How are you? I've just been talking about you. Hiya. I believe you've had a little windfall on the Al What's it? Lottery? Yeah, it's race. Right. Oh, good news travels fast, doesn't it? Don't tell me you're after the hands out and all. No, but I could think of a couple of neighbours who deserve the money more than I do. What do you say, Bing? Mm, been twisting everything, have you? Trying to get people on your side? Certainly not. I've simply been telling the truth. I've nothing to be ashamed of. Just leave it now. Come on, let's go. Yeah. See, Twiggy was quick enough to jump to the defence. Wonder how much she got out of him. Look, thank you for your support, but I'm sure we'll be able to handle this for ourselves. Well, I must be going. Where are you off to? I'm going to the hospital to see Mandy. Are you going in your car, kid? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Couldn't give us a lift, could you? Don't want to be getting on the bus with this fella. <laughs> I mean, I'd take one of my own cabs, only uh, I've had a little bit of a setback on that front. You don't mind, do you? No, no. Great, should we get going now? I still can't believe it. She's absolutely gorgeous. She's just perfect. What do you expect? She's got this for parents. Yeah, I'll look at a little bit. I still can't believe it happened so quickly. I mean, I was in labour nearly two days with Rachel. Well, she would have to be awkward, wouldn't she? Fancy being born in Ron's Moby. Yeah, bargain of the year, eh? It's also sudden. I mean, she wasn't due for another fortnight. Hey, listen, I've put a notice in the echo what she'll be in tonight. I want the whole world to know. What do you think she looks like? Oh, it's hard to tell when they're so tiny, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hey, listen. We're going to have to decide on a name, you know, because you can't be called Baby Sweeney forever. Yeah, well, I've been thinking about that. I thought it might be nice to call her Ruth after your mum. Ruth? Yeah, why not? I think it's a lovely name. Ooh. Don't you think it's a bit old-fashioned? Well, all the old names seem to be coming back in, don't they? Yeah. Hey, wait, well, tell me when she's a grandmother, she'd be me, though. I thought Ruth Elizabeth after your mum and Beth. Ruth Elizabeth? Yeah, and I like that. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right there, Ruth Elizabeth. There you are. I just wish Beth could be here to meet a new sister. Well, she is here with us. She's with us all the time. I mean, who does he think he is? It's got nothing to do with him. Take no notice. He's just jealous, that's all. Money does that to people. Who's jealous? Oh, that Jimmy Corker's been having slight digs at Rosie over this lottery money. You what? Oh, he was talking to David Crosby. He's obviously been going around telling everyone. Oh, that's stupid, isn't he? What the bloody hell does he think he's playing at? I just don't want to be falling out with all the neighbours again. It was bad enough when we first moved in here. We haven't fallen out with anyone, love. They're the ones being funny. Eddie's right, I'm telling you. People go strange when money's involved. It's their own fault they missed out. Exactly. Imagine if it'd been the other way around and we'd forgotten to give Bing our steak, eh? Do you think he'd be rushing over here with half our willings? I don't think so. Don't let them get to you. They're not worthy. Anyway, I think we should go out tonight to celebrate. <sighs> oh, again? Eh, hey, you're only young ones, aren't you? Do you fancy going the bingo? Bingo? Yeah, I've started going with Aggie and Josie from our own. Do we have a good laugh? 
doesn't sound like much of a nice house. Oh, you'll love it. There's a great atmosphere. Mm. There's a bar. They do lovely foods. And they're more like social clubs these days. A and Aggie won 300 quid last week. What, are you joking? Yeah, and that was in the first half. It's a thousand for a full house after the interval. I was only waiting for two numbers and all the sweat was pouring off me. Sounds all right. Why don't you come with us? You never know, you might be on a lucky streak. Hey, and we could ask your Sarah and make a night of it. Hey, and they have this uh, national link-up game. You can win up to 50 grand every night. Go away. That's it, then. I'm definitely going. Hey, imagine if I won 50 grand. Hey, we'd have uh, 150,000. We'd be able to move into one of them uh, big detached houses in Wilton or somewhere. <laughs> no, you couldn't, cos you'd have to give 25 grand of it to me. We'd have to split it. Oh, listen to me. Uh, are you sure you're not related to the Crosbys? <laughs> Oh, I still can't believe she's here. It's so strange. Mm. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, you don't look it. I think you're about to cry, aren't you? No. It's because I'm happy. <laughs> nah, I know how you feel. I'm dead made up, you know. Looking forward to the future. Just you, me, and baby Ruth Elizabeth. Congratulations! <laughs> me and Pat thought we'd better get down here straight away, you know. Wet the owl baby's head while we could. Here, I've got glasses and everything, kids. <laughs> All right. Eh, uh, what's that? Is it enough for two? It's one of those Weight Watcher meals. Looks quite nice, actually. I've just got it from the trading post. Casey, you really don't need to go on his eyes. I only want to lose a few pounds. There'll be nothing of you. You can talk. You're wasted the size of one of my thighs. Oh, I don't think so. Um, listen, I've been thinking about what you were saying before. Are you seriously thinking about packing all your dancing in? Oh, I don't know. I'm just feeling a bit fed up, that's all. Maybe I'm just not good enough to be a dancer. Well, why don't you come away from me in the beauty parlour? <laughs> Doing what? Wiping sweat off some beds? No. I mean, obviously you'd have to start at the bottom, but I could easily get you trained up. You could go on them courses, learn all about manicures, massages, everything. You could end up loads of... Oh, don't tempt me. And you wouldn't necessarily have to give up your dancing full time. But it's always good to have something to fall back on, isn't it? Maybe you could teach it part time or something. Yeah, I suppose so. And you've got nothing to lose. You'd be learning new skills, earning all right money. It'd be to waste in your life going from audition to audition and never having any luck, doesn't it? I know what you're saying is making sense, but it just seems such a waste of time all those years of college for no reason. No, I wouldn't say that. I mean, you learnt loads of stuff there, didn't you? You shouldn't take it so personally. There are millions of dancers, aren't there? It's just getting that lucky break. It's probably more about who you know. Yeah, and who you sleep with. Look, working for me wouldn't be the end of the world. You could even start up your own aerobics classes on the side. Make a fortune that way. What do you reckon? When can I start? Honest. Well, like you say, I've got nothing to lose, have I? Well, in that case, I'll book tomorrow. Yeah, all right. One, two, three... <laughs> that would be lovely. Hey, uh, what do you think of little Ruth's first teddy, eh? Hey? Hey? I want it named Corky after me. Corky the bear. <laughs> I thought it was Corky the cat. No, Pat, this is a bear, this, love. <laughs> it's big enough, isn't it? How do you get it up here in a forklift? Right then. <clears throat> Who's after the cigar to celebrate? Patsy, can I interest you, love? Hang on, soft lad. You can't smoke in here. It's a hospital. I'm more to the point. It's a maternity ward. <laughs> All right, OK. No need to bite me head off. Uh, Mandy, don't be offended, but um, I've got loads of Alice's old stuff at home. You'd be more than welcome to it. I mean, don't feel obliged, but it seems silly to buy a lot of new things when they grow out of everything so quickly. Oh, don't worry, I won't be offended. That's great. Hey, listen. Do you hear about the trouble there, Al, fella, and that Al girl are having with Eddie and Rosie Banks? No, what's that? Mm, it's all my fault. I forgot to take the money over. Oh, don't be silly, Rachel. It's not really your fault. Listen, Bing and Jean, right, in a syndicate with Eddie and Rosie in the lottery. And the numbers come up. They went 100 grand. And now that bank shower, they're refusing to cough up. Well, oh, that's how it gets. Wouldn't you think they'd have put the money in for them? Oh, that's what I said. Bang out of order, that. I wouldn't have thought Rosie and Eddie were like that. <sighs> Mandy, money changes people, didn't you know that? Hey? And talking of which, I better love you and leave you. Got a little bit of business to sort out. Hey, hopefully get me taxi bank sorted for tomorrow. So I'll get things moving in that direction, you know. I'd better be making a move too. Leave you to get some rest. Are you going back to the close, Patsy? Could you uh, drop us off? Hey, better watch out. People will be spreading rumours about you and me after fling. Hey? Uh. I don't think so. You take care, hey? get some rest. Listen, look after yourself, eh, and the babs. Bye, thanks for coming. See ya, ta Are there any oh. toilets in here? Um, yeah, you go out the ward, they're on the right. Okay. Oh, can you get past? Yep. 
Uh, the calm after the storm, eh? You must be shattered. Yeah, I'm a bit. <laughs> well, look, I'll get off with Rachel in a minute. Leave you to get some sleep. You know, I was hoping to have heard from Cathy that the little girl sent the letter to. Listen, man, you don't want to be getting tied up with other people's problems. Let's just concentrate on being happy for a change. Just me, you, and little baby Ruth Elizabeth, eh? Cheers, Patsy. Thanks for the lift, kid. Hey, I'll bet there'll be a few curtains twitching round here seeing me and you getting out of a car together, eh? Well, <laughs> so long as people have something to talk about, eh? Yeah, now listen, if you're ever short of anything, cup of sugar or anything like that, just give us a knock. We're neighbours now, aren't we? Hey? Yes, I see your butterflies have flown away. Yeah, that's Jackie. Putting her foot down. Well, she's in charge of all the decor now that she's moved in. Uh, I thought they'd brighten the place up myself. Anyway, listen, once the taxis are all sorted out, I'll have a little word with you and Maxie, eh? Sort out an account. Maybe give you a bit of a discount. Yeah, great. Nice one, nice one. Thanks. Hiya, love. Um, have you heard how Mandy and the baby are? Fine, fine. Trish, um, look, I know things are a bit awkward at the moment over this, this Lost Street business, but we don't want to be falling out with you, you know. Well, it's like you say, things are a bit awkward at the moment. Mum and Dad are very upset. Well, who wouldn't be losing out on that kind of money? You want to get your facts right, love? I don't think I really want to discuss this just now. Look, love, it's all been a big misunderstanding. Your Mum and Dad have got things wrong. Oh, well, that's interesting, because other people seem to think it's you who's got things wrong. So everyone knows about this now, do they? Mm, seems to become quite a talking point. Look, it's not our fault. When your Mum and Dad didn't bring the money over, we just assumed the syndicate was off. And is that before the numbers came up or after? Oh, come on, Rosie. You don't need to listen to this. Let's go. Hiya, love. Uh, <laughs> didn't think there was anyone in there. Have you seen your car? No. Who's at work? What do you want it for? Hey, oh, nothing. Hey, it's just, um, well, I've got this porter cabin thing, you know, being delivered for my taxi business tomorrow, and uh, I just wanted a little word with my body. Apparently, some of my radio gear is still in the club. Oh, well, they probably won't be back till the early hours. Ah, oh, right, right, okay, yeah. Hey, it can't be much fun, can it, for you, you know, being stuck in a big house like this on your own every night, eh? Hey? Want to get yourself out a bit more? Listen. You know, if ever you want a babysitter for your little one, me and Jackie, we'd be only too happy to oblige. Thanks anyway, but I've already got a babysitter. Oh, right, yeah. Well, off out tonight, then, are you? No, we're special. I'm just going to bingo. Why? No, nothing, nothing. Just... Not just being navely, you know. <laughs> anyway, have a nice time. Do you want me to give Carl a message? Um, no, you're all right. I'll probably see him myself later. Right. See ya. Yeah, see ya. Can you believe the name of her, Stuck on cow. You should have smacked her once. It's typical, isn't it? Just as everything's starting to go all right, something else always has to spoil it. Oh, you two look very nice. I don't feel it. Why, what's up? Mm, that snotty lady Farnham's just kicked off on it, accusing her of all kinds. What'd she say? She just had a go at me over this lottery money. In the street and everything. I could almost feel the curtains twitching. Oh, I feel terrible. Why? You've done nothing. I just don't want all the neighbours talking about us. Well, if they want to talk about us, let them. It's just jealousy, that's all. Look, if they begrudge us having a little bit of luck, then that's their problem. We want that money fair and square, and that's all there is to it. Don't let them spoil it for us. Ready? Mm, nearly. Yeah. OK. Oh, hello, Danny. Mm. Come in. Patsy, my darling, you look magnificent. All right, thank you. Everything all right with Thomas and Alice? Yes, yes, they're fine. I just wanted to have a quick word with Max before you go out. All oh, right, what can I do for you? Well, it's about the Over 55s Club. What about it? Well, I've been landed with the task of organising their annual Christmas bash, and I was trying to think of an interesting venue when it suddenly occurred to me that my favourite son-in-law's restaurant <laughs> would be ideal. <laughs> yeah, a restaurant? Yes, yes, be only for one night, of course. 
I thought the members would enjoy a more sophisticated setting for a change. You know, that church hall would be so dank and miserable. And I knew you'd be happy to waive any fee and hopefully sort out uh, a nice discount on the refreshments for us. I see. Right. Oh, whew. Christmas. Uh, we're very busy. Oh, don't worry about it, Dad. That's fine. Max will check out the bookings, tell you which is the best night. Oh, great, great. Thank you. Well, I'll leave you to get on. Enjoy your evening. Oh, I'm sure we will. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye, Dad. <laughs> see you. Hmm. <laughs> What do you think you're doing? I mean, I don't want the restaurant overrun with a gang of coughing dodgers. I mean, especially with the week up to Christmas. It's our, it's our premium season. Max, how dare you say that after everything my parents have done for us? I mean, if it wasn't for them, remember, you could have Dill as a partner, or Jimmy Corkill as a partner, for that matter. Well, well of course, yeah, I appreciate that. But, I mean, the, the week up to Christmas, I mean, I don't think I could afford to set aside a, a night for that. Lord, we'd lose too much. My parents have made huge sacrifices for us. This is the least we can do for them. And that is the end of the matter. It's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck then, eh, girls? <laughs> oh, and uh, if she does win another fortune, make sure she still comes home, eh? Hey, Matt Chance, I'll be buying myself a toy boy jetting off on the first plane to the Bahamas. <laughs> yeah, and I'll be going with her. <laughs> and me. It's a good job I'm not easily offended, isn't it? Hey, now, don't you be getting too drunk to know <laughs> Me? As if I would. Oh, see you later. <laughs> see, see you later. Ta -ra. Ta -ra. Thank you. <laughs> I think they feel quite unnerved having me as a customer. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be on their best behaviour. Well, this way I get to have a night off and uh, keep an eye on the staff. You know, I can't remember the last time we two had a night out together. <laughs> Just the two of us. Shall we order some champers? Mmm, yes. Wrong. Max! Patricia! Fancy seeing you here. Well, I am the owner. <laughs> Dill, Susanna. Well, don't tell me you're eating here on your day off. Why not? It's the best place around and uh, excellent prices. He never changes, does he? He's clinging on to every last penny. So, are you two out for a nice romantic little dinner? Yeah, it's Susanna's idea. Well, I thought, why not? If we are going to eat out, we may as well increase the profits of my children's father. But where we all benefit. Um, you don't mind if we join you? Well, it seems silly sitting at separate tables. No, no, of course not. So. Well, this is a nice surprise, isn't it? I wasn't expecting a cosy little foursome like this. Shall we order some wine? Is red okay with everyone? So you're having an evening off from the club? Yeah, it's nice to get away from the place. Everything going well, then? So well, you're thinking of expanding, aren't you? Oh, really? What's all this, then? Well, I've got some contacts over in Dubai, and I've been wanting to get into the growing entertainment market over there for a while now. Dill's buying into a nightclub out there. It's a guaranteed money spinner, by all accounts. So you're not the only entrepreneur doing well, Max. Are you thinking of moving over there? Well, not permanently, but I will be out there for a while while I get things up and running. Oh, uh, Lilith is going well, so that pretty well runs itself. Sounds great. Maybe you should open a restaurant out there. Well, well Dill was saying it's the ideal time to buy. Um, I don't think our capital would stretch that far just at the moment. Excuse me while I go to the loo. <laughs> uh, me too. <laughs> well, I don't think I like the idea of those two going off together. Well, what do you mean? Well, she's already stolen one man from me. There's no reason why she shouldn't try it again. Susanna, how dare you talk about my wife like that? We are perfectly happy. So you can rest assured that your man is in utterly safe hands. Oh, come off it, Max. I know Patricia and I are polite enough on the surface, but you must be mad if you think I'd ever trust her. Or even forgive her for that matter. Look, do you mind if we just change the subject? <laughs> Not at all. So... Life with Dill must be pretty comfortable. You, um, he doesn't seem strapped for cash. I'm not with him for the money. It's his good looks and personality I'm addicted to. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, he doesn't seem like your type, does he? And what would you say was my type? Somebody more like your good self? Well, not someone like him, that's for sure. The children are incredibly fond of him, and that's the most important thing. I'm not very happy about the children being lumbered with uh, another uncle. Well... If you hadn't left us in the first place, there'd be no need for so-called uncles. 
Oh, did you miss me? Oh, what do you think? <laughs> I need to go phone the babysitter. Um, I'm glad we've got a minute alone. Oh, yeah? Well, the thing is, I'm thinking of asking Susanna to work for me in Dubai. It'd be great if I could have someone I can trust to keep an eye on things when I come back over here on business. And I was just wondering what you thought about that. Well, to be perfectly blunt with you, I'm not very happy about that at all. I've already lost my children once before when they went off gallivanting around America with some pompous actor. And I have no intentions of losing them again. So you'd be pretty much against it then? Because I know she's looking for something to occupy her time. What do you think? Everything all right? Yes, yeah, fine. Everything's <clears throat> just fine. Love. You frightened the life out of me then. What are you doing here? Uh, I was just. You're on the rob, aren't you? No, I'm not on the rob. What do you think I am? I know what you are. You're a bloody thief. You've been done before for breaking into Eddie listen, and Rose's. Listen, listen, it's not what you think. Oh, isn't it? Well, I'm phoning the police. You can explain to them what you're doing here. There's no need for the police. No need for the police? I find a burglar in my house and you say there's no need for the police? Just let me explain. There's nothing to explain. You're a robber and that's all there is to it. You knew I was going to be out tonight and you knew Carl was at the club. It doesn't take a genius to put two and two together. You're not getting away with this. I'd watch what you're saying if I was you, love. I'm going to get Eddie. Um, I don't think so. I mean, you wouldn't want your fella getting into trouble with his daddy now, would you? Hey? What are you talking about? This is how I got in. I've got my own set. Where did you get them from? They're mine! Off your Carl! This house is just as much mine as it is yours, love. In fact, you wouldn't even be living here if it wasn't for me. What? I've got a special little arrangement with Carl. He knows all about it. So you're still thinking of calling the police? What are you going on about? I've got a business deal with your husband. So I think you better have a little chat with him before you start blabbing your mouth off to the busies. Now, if you'll excuse me, Hey, Bing, what do you reckon, then? What's going on? It's my new business premises, kid. Posh enough for you. I assume you've had planning permission. Yeah, you assume right, mate. All above board, so there's no need for you to complain or call one of your little residence meetings, because I am doing you a lot of favour around here. And how do you make that out? Providing a service to the community, aren't I? Plus bringing in a little bit of extra trade to the area. At least it's marginally better than that other monstrosity he had. It's just the idea of a cowboy like that running a so-called business on our very doorstep. Oh, leave it, David. The man's only trying to earn a living the same as the rest of us. Hey, Bing, have the bank's lock coughed up yet? Uh, no, not yet. 
Well, if you want, listen, I could get a few lads that I know to go round there and see them, scare them into seeing sense, know what I mean? That won't be necessary, thank you. We'll sort this out ourselves. Well, listen, the offer's there if you need it, don't forget. That's all we need. Corkill's sending the heavy mob round to see the banks. I have already had a much more subtle idea. What? All right. Thanks, Dan. I'm sure that means. Thanks. Go on, home, sweet song, mate. Oh, I can hardly call it that. Yeah, well, don't worry. We'll soon be in a little place of our own, won't we? Welcome home. Oh, yeah. oh, thanks. Oh, how is she? Oh, she's fine. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, isn't she pretty? How much did she weigh? Uh, six pounds, two ounces. Oh, oh. What have you called her? Uh, Ruth. Oh, oh, it's not Ruth. Oh, I made it for you both. Here, me and Eddie, we've got you this. Oh. oh, Rosie, she didn't have. Oh, go away, we wanted to. It's um, it's a baby alarm. You haven't already got one, have you? Um, no. Oh, they're really great. It'll save you having to check on her all the time, you know, right. when she's asleep. <laughs> Listening to other people's conversations and all. <laughs> Quite expensive, aren't they? Oh, Rosie, that's far too extravagant. Oh, don't talk soft. Besides, it's hardly broke the bank. You heard um, me and Eddie had a bit of luck on the lottery. Yeah, we did it. I told Mandy and Simbad all about it. Yeah. Well, there's always two sides to every story, isn't there? <sighs> hey, what have you said to Sarah? What? Nothing. Not much. Listen, I had to say something, didn't I? She was going to phone the police. What the hell do you think you're playing at going into the house when Sarah's around? She told me she was going out for the night. I didn't know she was going to come back early. You should have spoken to me first. All right, I'm sorry. OK. But I needed some of my cash. Desperate. I had to make the final payment on this place to the fella, didn't I? You've really landed me in it now. All right, I've said I'm sorry. What more can I say? And I... I don't want my Jack hearing anything about this, do you hear? Well, I won't say anything, but I can't speak for Sarah. All right, well, I'll go and have a word with her, try and explain things. Explain what? That you've got your drugs money hidden in our loft? You keep your mouth shut, will you? We'll think of something. Yeah, like what? Well, I don't know. Anyway, it's not my problem anymore. I've shifted all my cash from your lot to my place until I find somewhere safer for it. That'll stop your missus snooping round. Thank God for that. Oh, well, I wouldn't look too pleased about it if I was you. Cos if I'm not using your lot anymore, I'm not paying your rent either. So you'll have to learn to stand on your own two feet now, sonny boy. Oh. Oh. I'll get it. Oh, hello. Uh, come in. I was hoping to catch you in. Hello, Patricia. Hello, Alice. Hi. <laughs> what can we do for you? Well, uh, it's good news, really. I've been offered a job. Oh, whereabouts? <laughs> uh, well, uh, that's the thing. I may be leaving Britain again. Dill wants me to be his assistant out in Dubai. Yes, yes, he did mention it to me. <laughs> well, I think that's a wonderful idea. I, I know it's all a bit sudden, but I am only considering it at the moment. I suppose I want a bit of advice, really. A, a bit sudden, yeah, I'll say. You've only known this Dill character for about five minutes. I mean, we can't just take off, disrupt the children's lives again. And for God's sake, I've only just started rebuilding a relationship with them. Look. I appreciate how you must feel. I don't expect to be happy about the children being dragged off to another part of the world again. But it's an offer I think I'd be mad to refuse. Hey, where's uh, Cracker and Polly, then? Eh, uh, well, I had to put them outside, but with the baby and everything, you know. Oh, that's nice, isn't it, eh? Cracker in the doghouse, eh? She'll be getting jealous, you know. Yeah, well, eh, uh, I'll let her back in again once we've cleared everything away, you know. So, where are you up to on getting your own place, then? Not the want to put any pressure on you or anything like that, you know. Well, uh, I've been in touch with a few estate agents up in the lakes. You yeah, well, are. That's the bomb up there, don't they, houses? Yeah, well, he can do, but, uh, well, we've seen some cheaper ones on the outskirts. I've sent for some info. Some of them look quite nice, so, uh, should be in our own little dream cottage before we know it. Just the three of us. I'm starving. What's for tea? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not cooking it. Oh, suppose that means I am. No, we've been invited out tonight. Oh, where? Over to David and Jean Crosby's. <laughs> You're joking, aren't you? No. Nope. Jean asked me this morning, bumped into around the shops. Well, we can forget that. No, I've said we'd go now, Ed. Love, when was the last time they invited us over for dinner? Hmm? This is the first time. Exactly. 
They've never wanted anything to do with us before, and now because we've suddenly won a few bob, we're being invited over for our tea. Look, they just said they wanted to talk to us. Yeah, and you know why, don't you? Hmm? So they can try and make us feel guilty. Do their best to get their hands on our winnings. Look, I've promised them we'd go now, Ed. Look, surely it won't do any harm. Look, they were in the syndicate with us. It'd give us a chance to explain properly. All right, then. But I'm telling you now, if they think they can talk us into giving them a share of that money, they've got another thing coming. Gene, I really don't know why you're going to all this bother on their account. What bother? I'm simply making a bolognese sauce. Anyway, I'm not in the least convinced that this is the right approach at all. They've already proved themselves totally uncooperative. Why on earth should they suddenly start playing fair and square now? Anything's worth a try. I'm uncomfortable about even letting them in the house after the way they've treated us. I feel very resentful. Well, you mustn't let it show. The most important thing is we don't lose our cool. I mean, this is what this meal is all about, to try and sort things out. And what's the likelihood of that, given their recent behaviour? Oh, surely it's worth a try. Jean, you know that I've always respected your optimism. But in this case, I certainly wouldn't hold my breath. I thought you said you'd only be an hour. Well, I had things to do. I do have to work, you know. I want to know why that Jimmy Corkill's got keys to this house. And what's this arrangement between you two? He needed some storage space. He told me if I let him use the loft, he'd chip in with the rent. Storage space for what? I don't know. You're lying. He's been using our loft to stash all his knockoff gear, hasn't he? Not knockoff gear. Oh, so if you know it's not that, then you must know what it really is. It was money. He needed to hide his money. And where's this money from? I said, where's it from, Carl? Drugs. What? I said drugs. He needed to hide his drug money. Now, do you understand why I didn't want to tell you? So, there are all kinds of drugs up there and all. And we've got a five-year-old in the house. Are you mad? It's not drugs, it's just the money. Don't be so naive. Why else would he be paying the rent on this place? I can't believe you let me move into this house knowing what was going on. Look, I thought it was a good offer. We were getting a nice house. Don't talk rubbish, Carl. What do you think would have happened if the police had to come round and find all kinds of drugs and money in the loft? Hey! Well, I didn't think it had come to that anyway. There's nothing there now, because he's moved it all out. <laughs> do you know you are even more stupid than I thought? That Jimmy Corkill must think you're a right mug. And what about Jackie Corkill? Does she know what's going on? No, she doesn't, so don't say anything to her. <laughs> I can't believe you want to cover up for him. He's used you, Carl, and you've been an idiot for letting him. If we'd have been raided, we could have both ended up going to prison. And what would have happened to Rebecca then? Hey, did you ever stop to consider that before you asked us to move in with you? You just don't use your head, do you? You make all kinds of promises about how you've changed, how things are going to be different this time. But you haven't changed. <laughs> you never will. When I agreed to move back in with you, I told you it was your last chance. I couldn't have made it clearer. Well, you've really blown it this time, Carl. Me and you, we're finished for good. Oh, come in, come in. Hi, Jane. Evening, Eddie. All right, Dave. Um, Look, I've gone through. Thanks, Jane. <clears throat> Sit yourselves down. Thanks. <clears throat> um, what would you like to drink? Uh, just tea for me, please. Uh, yeah, I'll have tea and all, please, Jean. Oh, uh, right. I'll uh, put the spaghetti on while I'm out there. It won't be long. You do both like pasta, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> It's, um, it's been very warm, hasn't it? Yes, yes, it has. It's, uh, it's been very mild, really. Um, I thought at first it was going to brighten up, but then it started to rain. Yeah. I had um, loads of washing outs. Had to get it in. Yes, well, it does often happen at this time of the year, doesn't it, these sudden squalls. I always find October can be a bit of a... bit of a schizophrenic month, weather-wise. Yeah. I'm sorry about dropping in like this, but, um... I needed to discuss it with somebody. So what do you think you'll do then? Well, I uh, think I'll take it. 
There's no reason for me to stay around here, is there? Well, I'm sure whatever decision you make, it'll be for the best. Well, I'll leave you to get on. Bye. So, Susanna may be off to pastures new. What a shame. My dead body. What about the children? Stand just cool it, will ya? What's all this now? It's your clothes. And then what I said, Cork, it's over. There's no need for a big scene. We need to talk. There's nothing to talk about. Do you know it was only yesterday I was telling your mother I wanted us to move back into the same room? Hey, thank God we didn't. You're a liar. I can't believe a word that comes out of your mouth. I don't want nothing more to do with you. Lovely. Thanks, Jean. Oh, yeah, thanks very much, Jean. Uh, you've um, got sores all around your mouth. Have I? Uh, uh, that's better. <laughs> Can't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I've made apple pie for dessert. Oh, you shouldn't have gone to all this trouble, Jean, you know. How's the new car running? Looks very nice. Yeah, yeah, they're, um, the good cars, then, very uh, solid. Mm. Hey, uh, another drink. Look, I think we should just get on to whatever it is you want to talk to us about. I mean, we know you didn't invite us over here for a nice little social visit. Well, now that you mention you know, it. We just wanted to have a proper chat, really, sort things out. We don't want to fall out with you over this. That's why it's vital that we clear the air. If you want us to be totally honest, we both feel that you've treated us most unfairly. Look, David, I know you must be feeling peeved at missing out, but that money didn't get to us. It's unfortunate, but that's all there is to it. But our syndicate had been going for weeks. Surely you must have realised that there'd just been a simple mistake. <laughs> we just assumed you'd dropped out. We weren't to know what had happened. Well, I must say, if it had been the other way round, we'd have put the money in for you. We are only talking about two pounds after all. Well, that's easy to say now, Jean. Oh, come on. You must know perfectly well that if we wanted to cancel our arrangement, we would have informed you. In my book, Eddie, a verbal agreement constitutes a contract. All I know is that your share of the stake money didn't reach us. That's not our fault. Nor was it ours. We weren't to know that Rachel would forget to pass the money on when our numbers came up. We were thrilled to bits. How were we supposed to know that, as far as you were concerned, our syndicate no longer stood? I appreciate what you're saying, Jean, but that doesn't make one iota of difference. That money didn't reach us, and that's all there is to it. Look, we don't want to be vultures here. Neither are we getting any younger. I mean, the chances of that sort of money coming our way again are pretty slim, to say the least. I mean, this could be our last chance of doing some of the things we've always wanted to do. I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. I just want you to see it from our side. I mean, just imagine if you were in our shoes. I bet you'd be more than a little peeved. Oh, beginning, Maxie. When did this appear? Yesterday. Apparently Barry Grant got that dill one to put it up, you know, when he bought the club in there. Oh. Uh, hey, what do you think of my new premises then, kid? Oh, <laughs> it's very you. Yeah. Listen, whenever you need a taxi, you'll know where to find me, won't you? Mm. Hey, I have to set up a little bit of dizzy for the resi. You know, contracting that, eh? Yes. <laughs> dill, could I have a word? Hi, right, Max. Yeah, sure. What about? Going ahead with this idea and offering Susanna a job in Dubai, I think I made my feelings very clear last night. Look, Max, I quite understand how you feel, but Susanna and you aren't married anymore. She's with me now and we've got plans of our own. Look, it's nothing to do with that. I am concerned about my children. How would you feel if your kids were tracked away to some foreign country by some stranger? Believe me, Max, I only want what's best for Susanna and the children. Oh, well then, if that's true, you will honour my wish and drop this whole idea of dragging them away immediately. I'm sorry, Max, but it's too late. Susanna seems to have made up her mind already. I can't go back on my word, not now. Look, I don't want her messed around. She's been through enough. Don't worry. As I say, I only want what's best for Susanna. Mm. 
What sort of thing? Uh, I think you must have got out the wrong side of the bed. <sighs> must be someone in here. Why? Is someone giving you a hard time? Yeah, so he's throwing me out. Listen, is there any chance I could keep in the office? <laughs> well, you just got rid of Jimmy Corkill. I'm not looking for another lodger. I've really blown it this time. Say so you're homeless? <laughs> well, yeah, sort of. Well, maybe this isn't the best time to discuss my new plans with you, then. What new plans? We're expanding. We're expanding? We are. How do you fancy a transfer to a new club I'm opening? Call it promotion. I need a manager that I can trust. Where is it? Dubai. What? I don't need an answer straight away. Just think about it, yeah? Do you think we're getting through to them? Oh, it's difficult to say. I have the feeling that Rose is ready to back down now. But I don't think it's going to be so easy with Eddie. I can't believe how uncompromising he's being. I feel really sorry for them. That's what they want, isn't it? Don't fall for it, love. Oh, yeah, but surely it wouldn't hurt us just to give them something. A couple of thousand, maybe. You're joking, aren't you? That's practically admitting that we're in the wrong. Thank you. Oh, oh, cheers, Jean. Oh, thanks, Jean. Uh, we'll have to be getting off after these. Leave you two in peace. Oh, so that's it, then. I take it you haven't given the matter any more thought? Oh, well, I think we've made it quite clear where we stand, Dave. This is ridiculous. Do you know, I can't understand how you can be so arrogant. You even used the numbers I selected. That in itself surely proves that you regarded the syndicate as an ongoing arrangement. Listen, Dave, we're entitled to use whatever numbers we want. Not exclusively yours. But everyone else thinks you're in the wrong. So who's everyone else? Almost everyone I've spoken to. Oh, so you're trying to turn people against us now, are you? No, I am not. I have simply been gauging public opinion, and the overwhelming majority of people believe that not only are you morally in the wrong, but you're legally in the wrong too. Oh, do they? Well, you can tell all these people you've been talking to to mind their own business, because it's got nothing to do with them. Oh, come on, Nosey, we're getting off. Just going around in circles here. Excuse me, Jean. Um, thanks for the food, Jean. You haven't heard the last of this, you know. Oh, haven't we? Can you believe the effrontery of the man? Thank you very much. Hey, hope to see you again. Thanks very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Max. Hmm, what brings you here? We need to talk. I don't think there's anything to talk about. You seem to have made up your mind. You're taking the children halfway around the world so you can be with your latest flame. No, it's not as simple as that. Dale's offered me a really good career move. Yes, we all know why, don't we? Is that a tone of jealousy I detect in your voice? Right. Me? Jealous of him? Joking on you. Remember what happened last time when you were in America? Look, when I went off with Andrew, there was nothing in it for me. It's different this time. Things aren't as serious between Dill and I. I want to go because I have some kind of a future out there. New prospects, a career, my own money for once. Don't kid yourself. What happens if you and Dill split up? You think you'd still be able to work for him then? You make it sound as if he's only offered me the job to get me into bed. It's not like that. I'm no bimbo. What sort of effect do you think this would have on the children long term? I'm sorry, Max. But you're the one who left us, and I think I'm entitled to try and find happiness elsewhere. For mine and the children's benefit. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, too. I, I just think you're making a huge mistake, Susanna. Dill just isn't your type. <laughs> you, you keep saying this. What do you mean? Why isn't he my type? It's just different, that's all. <laughs> what do you mean, different? Are we talking gender here? Race? Is that what this is all about? Of course not. I'm thinking of the children. And the top and the bottom of it is, I don't want anyone taking them away from me. Right. I've had enough of you. Ouch. Go on. Go on. Out you go. You can sleep outside from now on. Um, this one of the letters we thought we had. OK, yeah, thanks. Bye. You know what? I've just caught that horrible moggy sniffing around the baby's cot. Yeah, well, I thought you'd thrown it out. Yeah, and he must have sneaked back in before Jimmy went out. Hey, tell you what, them baby alarms that Rosie Banks gave us are great, aren't they? You can hear every breath she makes. Mm. Hey, we have to be careful you don't say anything about Jimmy while we're up in the bedroom. Oh, yeah, I never thought of that. <laughs> and it's very generous of them, though, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Who's on the phone? Oh, Mrs Shackleton. Do you want to speak to you about the talk you're giving at the refuge? Well, partly, yes, but, um, I wanted to know if she'd heard from Cathy, yeah. The girl who wrote to me. You're not still worrying about her, are you? I just thought she might have responded to my letter. Mrs Shackleton hasn't heard from her either. Well, it probably just means that she's sorted her problems out. Oh, you read her letter. Her husband's knocking the living daylights out of her. She could be lying there dead for all I know. And you know how distressed she sounded, and she's worried about the children. Yeah, well, we can't go interfering. Do you remember that time you looked through the window and you saw Trevor hitting me? You just walked away. Do you remember you told me how guilty you felt afterwards? 
You said how much you regretted it for not interfering. Yeah, and I've regretted it every day since. But this is different. No, it's not. I can't just walk away. Because if anything has happened to that poor girl, I won't be able to live with the guilt. I'm going to go and see her. Oh, thanks for that, Chloe. See you tomorrow. Good night, Mr Farnham. Good night. Thanks for the wine. You're welcome. I wonder what Patricia would think if she knew we were alone here at this time of night. Oh, I think she'd simply understand we were discussing the future of our children. <laughs> I'm sure she would. I'd better be making a move. I've just had a strange sensation. Deja vu. Have you really? Yes. Remember just before I went to America when I came around to see you? Yeah. We kissed before I got into the cab. Not just a kiss on the cheek, but a proper, long, passionate kiss. Like passionate lovers. I better lock up. Max, please don't run away from me. We've still got things to discuss. <laughs> Such as? Suppose I just say what I came here to get off my chest. Uh. Well, the <laughs> thing is, Max, I'm sure you're already aware of this, but nothing's changed. I still feel exactly the same way about you. Now, look. You shouldn't be saying any of this because you know what happened last time, don't you? No, but it's the truth. Now, why deny it? What's the point of bottling all things up? I can't believe I still feel the same way about Susanna. you, despite the way you've treated me. I know I should be over you by now, but I'm not. Every time I look at the children, I see your face. Now, maybe I'm stupid, but I'd have you back tomorrow, you know. There's only one thing that could make me stay in England, and that's you. Brookside the Women and Brookside the Teenagers are both still available on video from your usual video retailer. Just came over to hand you our half share of this week's syndicate. Don't take that money, Rosie. Don't accept it. What the hell do you think you're playing? It's simply what I told you last night. If we'd wished to cancel our participation, we'd have told you verbally. As far as I'm concerned, the agreement still stands. There you are. Don't you think this is all getting a little bit stupid now? No, I don't. I'm not taking your money. The syndicate's off. Well, in that case, I forbid you to use my numbers. You don't own the bloody numbers! Look. Can't you find yourself something more worthwhile to moan about, like wheelie bins or the price of fish? Come away, Rose. See ya. Patty, why'd you have to be so rude? Oh, come off it, Rose. He's a right pain. Yeah, well, I don't care what you say. I think he's got a point. I think we should give them something. Oh, don't you start, no. What are you doing here? I stayed here last night. I still had my key. Didn't get in till late. Oh, so with your own house over the road? Me and Sarah had an argument. I'm still here, you know. And I'm not moving until you accept this money. What's he like? Well, you'll be waiting there a bloody long time, then. Oh, I don't believe you. You've only been living together five minutes. I mean, what did I say, eh? Don't you ever learn? It's nothing serious. It must be serious if she's thrown you out. She didn't throw me out. I walked out. We just needed more time to get to know each other again. Moving in like that, it was all too quick. Everything will sort itself out. Well, it better have to do me, lad, though. 
Oh, God. What a morning. The Robin gets. You know, I never would have thought that about Rosie and Eddie Banks. You can't trust anyone, can you? I remember when you could leave your front door open and you could trust the gasmen. Those were the days, eh? Tell you what, they'd be murder if they tried that with me. There'd be no way I'd be letting them get away with it. I don't know what else we can do. Yeah, here we go. Hi. Enjoying your first day, then? Oh, yeah. I spent three years at dance college in the hope that one day I could spend my life making people coffee. Hey, Casey, would you mind taking over on reception for a bit? Yeah, right. And then can you go to the beauty bar this afternoon and give Elaine a hand? Yeah, of course. So, have you given up with the dancing all together, then? Well, for the time being, yeah. I was just getting sick of getting knocked back from auditions all the time. You don't need to tell me about it. I mean, you're looking at a person who's been compared to Mariah Carey. I'd love to give my singing career a go, but it's just so hard getting your first break. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's so frustrating, especially when you know you're good. Me and you are wasted here. Hey, there are loads of prospects in the hair and beauty business. Oh, hey, love. Come in. I haven't called at a bad time, have I? No, no, of course you haven't. Um, what can we do for you? Hi, love. How are you? Fine, thanks. Look, I know this is all a bit awkward, but it's about this lottery money. Oh, not you and all. I feel terrible. Mr and Mrs Cosby are really upset about it, and it's all my fault. I'm the one who forgot to bring over the money. Well, I'm really sorry about that, love, but I've already explained the situation to David and Jean. They know where they stand. Oh, well, it was worth a try, I suppose. I'll, um, see myself out. Yeah. See you, love. See you. Why'd you have to be so pig-headed? Look, why can't we just give him a bit of the money and get this lot sorted once and for all? Because I don't see why we should. Well, you've heard what Rachel said. It was all her fault we didn't get the money, not David and Jean's. I don't care what you say. I think you're being really tight about all this. I want us to give him something. <sighs> all right, then, if that's what you really want. What? You mean you've changed your mind? Well, I haven't exactly changed my mind, but if it gives me a bit of peace and quiet, then it'll be worth it. They're not getting half, though. Well, what you reckon, then? Oh, I don't know. A couple of hundred. What do you reckon? Three? But what about five, eh? Five it is. That sounds fair to me. Oh, thank God that's sorted. I was starting to think winning all this money would turn out to be more trouble than it's worth. I just hope they'll be satisfied. Hmm. Hey, hey, why don't we have a few of the neighbours round tonight to have a little celebration drink, eh? Not another party. No, no, it wouldn't be a party. It'd just be a few of the people round for a bit of a bevy. Might do us good to clear the air, especially if everyone has been talking about us. All right, all right, if that's what you want. Right. I'll give people a knock later. How are you, Bing? Hey, I'm just doing a lovely job on your other half, sir. Bet you didn't even recognise her, did you? <laughs> yes, very nice. <laughs> we shouldn't be long now. It's no hurry, my dear. Things are pretty quiet in the gift box this morning. Jackie, I was wondering, could you do me a favour? Would you mind putting up one of these in your window? It's for the over 55's Christmas charity bash. Um, it's a bit early for a Christmas do, isn't it? Well, not really. It's only nine weeks away. They put the clocks back an hour on Sunday and lights are drawing in. Oh, what a depressing thought. Winter draws on. <laughs> Everyone's welcome, by the way, and that includes you young people. Tickets available from me. What is it on, Ben? Yeah. It's at Grant's Restaurant, and the ticket price includes a three-course meal and entertainment. Oh, put you away from me and Ron. I love eating in that place. Great. Great. That sounds very well, you know. And the entertainment lined up? Ah, uh, that's still to be confirmed. Because with it being a charity bash, I mean, I don't mind doing a few numbers, and don't worry, I won't expect to be paid. Oh, thank you, Beverly. That's, that's very kind of you to offer. You should get some karaoke lined up. I mean, that always goes down a storm, doesn't it? Yes, yes, that's well worth considering. Jean's been telling me about this Rosie and Eddie Banks business. I can't believe the cheek of them. No, nor can we. I'm with you the whole way, Bing. We all are. I wouldn't be letting them get away with it. Don't worry. We don't intend to. Mand. Mand. Oh, how long have I been asleep? About an hour. Madam will be waking up for a feed soon. I thought you'd like a cup of tea in peace before she does. Oh, thanks. That's lovely. Oh. Listen, would you mind looking after her for an hour or so this afternoon while I pop out? No prizes for guessing where you're going. Look, I can understand that it might seem odd to you, but... I just feel a responsibility to check that Kathy's OK. I don't know why, but I do. Well, why do you have to get involved? Why can't you stay here with us? I just want to check she's all right, have a chat with her. <laughs> Look, man, I really don't want you to go, you know. Well, I'm sorry, Sinbad, but I am. Um, and that's all there is to it. Hiya. 
Hiya. Hiya. Hiya. Hiya, Beth. Hey, just popped in to let you know we're having a bit of a do round arse tonight if uh, you and Ron fancy it. So, are you celebrating anything special? Well, we've had a bit of luck on the lottery, so we thought we'd have a few of the neighbours round for a drink. Um, well, you're all welcome, like. Will Dave and Jean Crosby be going? Yeah, I hope so, yeah. Why'd you ask? Just wondering. Right, well, uh, might see you later then. Hi. See ya. The nerve of her inviting us all around. I mean, after what she's done to poor Bing and Jean, eh? Me and Ron aren't going. Jackie, do us a favour, mate. Lend us a fiver till I get me gyro. Oh, yeah, go on then. Thanks, man. Cheers. Uh, I'm just going to chip you. Does anyone want anything? Oh, yeah. Uh, can you get us a couple of scratch cards? Might be my turn to win something. There you go. Right, I'll just go and stick the kettle on. Okay, it won't be long. See you later. See you later. Yeah, is there anything you want me to do? Well, there isn't really much on this afternoon. Are you sure you still want me to work here? There doesn't seem enough work for you lot. I've told you, it'll pick up tomorrow. It's just quiet today, that's all. Say that again. Hmm. Oh, no, Mr Crosby, it's called Hollyoaks. And anyway, it's not just for kids, you'll really like it. Hey, love. Oh. Uh, David and Jean in, please. Yeah. It's Mr and Mrs Banks to see you. Yes? What can we do for you? Well, we've just come over to say, well, um, we've been thinking about what you said last night and we've decided you should have a share of the money. Really? Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, well, we never wanted to fall out with you over all this and, well, we're sorry things turned out the way they did. Well, <laughs> so we. Right, uh, there you go. I thought you'd prefer cash. Uh, I'd keep it somewhere safe if I was you. Uh, how much is that? 500. Yeah, just a little gesture. So, uh, hopefully we've heard the last of all this nonsense now. Five hundred pounds? Is this some sort of a joke? You what? What about the rest? The rest? Yeah, it's the other forty-nine and a half thousand. You are joking, aren't you? You look as if you're getting that. Lucky! You, you must think we're stupid. You really think we're going to accept this derisory amount? Here, you take it back. Look, I'd keep all of it if I was you, because you won't be getting anything else. That's our final offer. You were practically admitting you're in the wrong by offering us this in the first place. Then you expect us to be over the moon with what can only be described as a blatant insult. Listen, you should be thankful you're getting anything you're ungrateful I'll get. We're not obliged to give you anything. Eddie. Yeah, that's what we think of your pathetic gesture. What's going on there? You bloody idiots. Look what you've done now. That just about sums it up. Come on, Jean. Let's go inside. Oh, that's probably something to do with his lottery winnings. Oh, it's only fortune brings you happiness. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not scary, it's embarrassing. So you're not going to change your mind then? Oh, look, I've told you, don't worry. I won't be long, it's not far. Yeah, I'll just be careful, eh? Yeah, I will be. What's going on? Hey, 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 get your hands off me. Oh, okay. OK, OK, I'm only trying to help, aren't I? Yeah, but we don't need your help. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Very navely. Well, I hope your money makes you very happy here. I don't believe this. Oh, Mike, don't be in them in here. You'll stink the place out. Hey, what would you do if you want 50 grand? Oh, a marching. I wouldn't know what to do with myself. Wonder we'd have to know your banks are doing with their money. Keeping it to themselves, the typhus to get. Can you believe what they've done to poor Bing and Jean Crosby? Apparently it was their numbers the years, do you know? I mean, ripping off two old age pensioners. You'd give them something, wouldn't you? Go for that, say. Oh, my God, I've won 30 pounds. Honest, yeah. Hello, Jackie Dees. Oh, hey, I've never won anything in my life. Hey, you're gonna get some of that for going to shop, are you? Get lost. Yeah, right. It's my money, the gaff. Hey, what were you just saying about Rosie and Eddie Banks before? It's different, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. I'll well, see you later. Yeah. See you, Trav. Bye. Who was that? Looks like a bit of your luck might have rubbed off on me. I've got an audition this afternoon. What about stuff for? A panto in town. It was that one I auditioned for the other week, but didn't get. Someone's broke their arm, so they want to see me again. Hey, is that the one with Shane Cochran in? Greg Brady from Sunset Bay. Yeah. <gasps> Do you think he'll be there today? Well, I 
don't know. I suppose he could be the bloody star. Did you hear something? Oh, I love that Shane Cochran. Don't know who cuts his hair, though. It's a show. Oh, I think he's got lovely hair. Oh, it's definitely dyed. There's no way he's a natural blonde. He's got brown eyebrows, for God's sake. What do you think he's like in real life? Oh, well, probably loves himself. Oh, do you remember that episode when he saw Cheryl off at the airport? <gasps> she ran off with his mum's boyfriend's sister. Oh, I cried me leg off. He should have got an Oscar for that. Look, I'm not being funny, Katie, but I thought you said you were packing all this in. I can't miss an opportunity like this. If I got it, I'd be loaded. And it is what I really want to do. I know, but it'll only be for a few weeks, won't it? And what'll happen then? Well, if I get something like this on my CV, it might make it easier for me to get other work. So you're handing in your resignation already, or what? Oh, let's just see what happens, eh? I'm sure he'll be seeing other people and all. How are you getting down there? Oh, I'll have to phone a cab. Well, I'll give you a lift. You don't mind me using your car, do you, Jack? You know I look at it as though it was me, eh? Yeah, go on, then. Oh, we'll come straight back. Don't to get a glimpse of Shane Cochran, are you? Um, I could come along for a ride. I mean, I could do me hours later. Oh, what is this? The Shane Cochran fan club? Come on, then. Let's go. Ah, oh, Todd, I'll just go and get me stuff. Oh, grab me coat for us. Oh, I feel all excited. It's like a little day out, isn't it? Pretty jealous, isn't it? Be like we're in Spain again. Yeah, but she's too busy drinking cocktails on some nudist beach with Samir or whatever his name is, isn't she? Jammy Joe. Yeah. Oh, well, we see you later anyway, Jack. We'll get uh, Shane's autograph if we see him, mate. Yeah, you lot get off. I'm sure I'll be able to manage you on my own. Give your fingers crossed for me, then. See you, Tara. Tara. Is that Cathy? Yeah, who is that? It's Mandy Jorda. She sent me a letter. What are you doing here? I'm sorry for just turning up like this, but uh, I was worried about you. I thought you might write back. I couldn't. Is your husband in now? No, no, he's at work. Oh, could I come in for a few minutes? He'll be back soon. He'll go mad if he finds you here. No, I promise I won't stay long. All right, then. Just for a few minutes. Hiya. Hiya. So, how did she get on? Did she get the job? We wouldn't know. They wouldn't even let us in. And Katie was no help either. She said we'd put her up if we were there watching her. That's it. Shane Cochran wasn't even there, so we decided to come back. Oh. I don't know how she does it. My nerves have been gone. Well, it's one of those things, isn't it? You've either got it or you haven't. I think she's dead lucky doing what she really wants to do. So you fancy yourself in the spotlight then, do you? Well, I wouldn't say no. It's funny, you know, this time last year I was going to move to London, make a start for my singing career. And what happened? Well, me and Mum had split up. He got back with his ex-wife and they were renewing the marriage vows and everything. I was doing my head in, so I just thought, I've got to get off, you know, and make a new start. So why didn't you? Well, random DD at the altar and we ended up getting back together. You almost sound disappointed. Don't be daft. You just can't help wondering what might have been, can you? Oh, you might have been a big star now. Still a black the second. <laughs> we'll never know, eh? Listen, are you doing anything tonight? Um, I promised Ron I'd go to the Legion with him, celebrating our first year anniversary, getting back together. Why? We've been invited to this hen night at Fufu Lamar's in Manchester. A load of the girls are coming over to the salon to get their hair done later, then we're going to get a minibus straight over there. It should be a good laugh. Just wondering whether you fancied it, you know. We haven't had a good night out since Spain. I won't be able to. I promised Ron now. I'll let him down. Sounds like it'd be a good laugh, though. Yeah, it should be. Well, I didn't really want you to come anyway. It's only asking you because you're a big Billy No mate, and I feel sorry for you. <laughs> Maybe next time, mate. And what makes you so sure I'll be asking you out a second time? Alison, go and play with Laura in your bedroom. Can't stay long. I'm sorry for coming round to your house. Um, I just haven't been able to get you out of my mind since you wrote to me. I wasn't sure why I did that. I read about you in the papers. I just felt a bit better knowing someone else understood how I felt. Well, I came during the day. I thought your husband would be out working. I'd go mad if he found you here. He found your letter yesterday and he wasn't thrilled about that. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I'd hidden it in a safe place. I don't seem able to have any secrets from him. Oh, it's my own fault. I shouldn't have written it. I was asking for trouble. Well, I'm glad you did. You've got to do something about this. You can't let him keep using you as a punch bag. I'm sure you know what it's like. I do fantasise about running away from him, of course I do. But where would I go? And what about the girls? They're both settled at school with their friends. Have you got no family or friends you can turn to? No. 
No, I've lost touch with them since I've been with Colin. Besides, if I went to them, he'd only come and find me and make me come back. My mum hasn't spoken to me since I took him back last time. How often does he hit you? It's been a daily occurrence these last few months. The slightest thing, and, and he just flies off the handle. Has he ever touched the children? No. No, I've never let him anywhere near them. I'd kill him if he laid a single finger on them. Does he hit you in front of them? He's been under an awful lot of pressure with work at the moment. He comes home so wound up sometimes. You can't make excuses for him. He needs help. You need to get out. He said he's going to try and change. He was crying last night. Told me he loved me. That he wasn't going to hit me again. He is trying to change, you know. Believe me, Kathy. He won't change. They never do. If he's beaten you once, he'll beat you again and again. It never stops. You've got to get out while he still can. I couldn't leave him. I've got nowhere to go. And I love him. Well, why did you write me that letter, then? If it wasn't a cry for help, what was it? I don't know. I should never have written it. Of course you should. Look, I know people who can take you in, protect you and the girls. Somewhere he'll never find you. If you stay here, the beatings are just going to go on and on until one day you won't be able to take it anymore. Please, Cathy, you've got to get out now. Don't make the same mistakes that I made. You're young, you've got your whole life ahead of you. You can start over again without him, believe me. But how? When will he be back? In about an hour. Maybe a bit later if he goes for a drink with his mates after work. Which he probably will. All right, that'll give us enough time. Enough time for what? To get you packed and out of here. I can't just leave like that. What about all my stuff? Well, you'll have to leave most of it. We'll just take the essentials. I can't do this. Yes, you can. This is mad. No, it will be mad if you stayed. Are you going to make the right decision now, or are you going to stay here and spend the rest of your life in misery? Where will I go? I've told you. Leave that to me. I know people who can help. Let's get packing. Well, we better be quick, because if he comes back, there'll be nothing down for either of us. Believe me, you're doing the right thing. So, how did it go? Seems to be going OK until he told me I haven't got it. Oh, I'm sorry, Katie. Yeah, so much. Oh, well, at least you had a go. That's the important thing. Who wants to work with Shane Cochran anyway? Oh, did they just tell you there and then? Yeah, they were just dead straight with me, told me I haven't got what it takes. Oh, well, look on the bright side of things. At least you've still got your job here. There's one other thing, now. I'm only messing the goddy. Ah! Oh, that was. Oh, yeah. you slime there. That's brilliant. Oh, God, will you get me Shane's autograph? There it is, everyone. I'm on pins here. Oh, I'm sure people will start turning up soon. Yeah, but I told them all seven. It's gone eight now. Don't worry, love. They'll be here. No, nobody's gonna come. Just know it. Ah, don't talk stupid. I'm not talking stupid. Nobody's gonna come. We all know why, don't we? Oh, stop panicking, Maria. It's only early. See? What did I tell you? Trick-or-treat! You're too early. Just come back next week. We should have just given David and Jean their half, right at the very beginning. What are you talking about, love? It's not their half. We won that money fair and square. It's ours. Then how come I'm getting all kinds of snotty looks and remarks every time I walk out the house? How come no one's turned up tonight, eh? I don't know. There could be all kinds of reasons. No. I'll tell you why no one's turned up tonight. It's cos they all hate us. And to be honest, I can't say I blame them. Why do you have to be so stubborn, eh? <laughs> Is yet young. Does she look fabulous or what? Come on, let's get in. Ladies first. Come on, get in. Peter! <laughs> Are you in for a little one? Oh, Bill, you changed your mind then? Well, it beats the Legion, doesn't it? What did you tell your old man? The truth. That I was going on a head night. I said I'd go out with him tomorrow. Does he know I'm going to be here? Oh, what do you think? Well, Foo Foo Lamar's beats the Legion any day, doesn't it? Hotel beats the legion. Are we get going or what? All right, go. Yeah, I appreciate that, Mrs. Shackleton, but this is an emergency. If if you can't help, they're going to have to come back with me. They've got absolutely no one else to turn to. 
Thank you. All right, then. Yeah, we're leaving right now. We could be back any minute. I'll see you in a bit, then. Bye-bye. Right, it's all been arranged. Mrs Shackleton said she can stay with her for a few nights just until she manages to sort you out with something more permanent. Did you hear that, kids? We're going to go and stay with Mandy's friend just for a few days. A bit of a holiday. I've written in this note. It's only short. Just to say not to bother coming to look for us. Not that he'll take any notice of it. Right, have you got everything you need? No, but I can't manage any more. OK, let's get going then. Oh, my God. Oh, please don't let that be him. It's somebody going next door. Come on, let's get out of here. I don't think I can go through with this. It's too sudden. Oh, what do I think I'm playing at? I can't just leave him like this. Believe me, this is your only option. Now, come on, you've wasted enough time as it is. OK, then. Come on, let's make a move, eh? See? What did I tell you? Getting yourself all upset over nothing. Mm. I told you people would turn up, didn't I? Hmm? Oh, it's you. I won't keep you a minute. I've just called over to inform you that Jean and I have been discussing our situation and we've decided to take legal advice. If you think that we're going to sit back and let you walk all over us, you've got another thing coming. We intend to get what we're entitled to, the full amount, and we're prepared to take it to the highest court in the land if necessary. I may look you. I'm quite serious, you know. Look. Do one, will ya? I'm sick of you persecuting us. I can't believe your arrogance. If I were 20 years younger, it would be coats off and on the lawn. Oh, <laughs> resorting to violence now, are we, Captain Mannerin? It's funny how money affects people, isn't it? Isn't it just? I don't need to resort to violence, Banks. But I can promise you one thing. We are going to get our share of that money. Expect to hear from my solicitor in the morning. For this weekend only, Brookside is on Sunday at 4.35. I think it would be a good idea if we met for lunch. Uh, the restaurant? One o'clock. All right, Susanna. Um, yeah, I'll see you then. OK. Bye-bye. Morning, Max. Oh, God, save it! <laughs> Is there a problem? Sorry? On the telecommunications front? Hmm? Using your mobile thingy right outside the house. The oh. lion side's gone down, is it? Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> um, Patricia, she was on the phone, so I was just phoning a, a business client. Oh, came outside for a bit of peace and quiet. Eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good move, Alton. Right. Well, I better get to the restaurant because uh, you know. Yes, Max. Look, before you dash off, mm -hmm. I was wondering if I could pick your brains for a minute. Well, it'll have to be for a minute because it... I'm rather late. Yes. Yes. Of course. Well, it's about our contretemps with the banks. Ah, oh, yes. Jean and I have decided it's time to take the gloves off. Right. We're going to take legal advice. Oh. Use the full force of the law if we have to. Getting involved in a lawsuit could prove costly. Also a bigger gamble than uh, the lottery. Morning, love. How are you? What are all these doing here? We never need this. Yeah, I bought them. You what? All of them? How come? 
Well, I thought I'd have a go on the scratch cards. Like, look, you can win up to 50 grand on some of these. Hey, look, now, I know I've been talking about playing up our winnings, like, but uh, doing this every day, it'll cost us a fortune. Yeah, but only a few, Bob. You like reading. I mean, it's all right you going out buying a new car, isn't it? Hey, hey I was only joking. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. Is everything OK? Apart from being blanked by David Crosby, Max Farnham, everyone's great. Listen, it'll soon blow over. The Crosbys will come round sooner or later. Ah, oh, no luck. They're talking about taking us to court. Yeah, talk. That's all it is. Anyway, I don't reckon they've got a legal leg to stand on. And what if you're wrong? What then? It's not going to come to that. Our names all over the papers. With legal costs, we could lose everything. <sighs> What's up? Nothing, son. You're arguing about lottery money again, aren't you? No, love. Yes, you were. I heard you. Listen, son, this has got nothing to do with you. Yes, it has. When I hear all sorts, slag me mum and dad off, calling your names going. Who's been saying that? Oh, everyone, everyone's talking about you. Yeah. Ignore it, it's green cheese, son. Yeah, that's right. It's, they're just jealous, love. Look, yeah. Hey, lad. Get yourself something extra for dinner, eh? Make up for it. Oh, yeah. I don't want it. Well, go ahead, treat yourself. I said eh? I don't want it. It's the Crosbys you should be giving your money to, not me. They're the ones you're ripping off. Lee? Do you know what? I'm puffed out just watching it. Oh, yeah. I don't know where she gets the energy from. She puts the rest of us to shame. Hey, maybe we should open her back and see if she's got a battery fitted. <laughs> Katie, you're going to have to call her a day, love, we're opening. Well, I'm almost finished. I just want to get properly warmed up. What? That's just your warm up. I also part of my new programme. Get turned up and get in shape. But you're in great shape. I know. It's not a pick on her. I'm a professional dancer now. I've got to look after me, body. Hey, she'd be telling us now she'd be going on a diet. Oh, well, I've got to watch what I eat, haven't I? I've been cutting down for a while now. I don't believe you. I mean, what hope is there for the rest of us? Eh? Hey, Beverly, don't despair. There's plenty of us fellas out there who still prefer the fuller figure. You know what I mean. I think I get you drift. Morning, all. Oh, Katie. Look at her, will you? I remember her when she was just a snotty-nosed kid. And now look at her. A famous actress standing alongside that Shane Cochran. Well, I'm just in the chorus line. You're on the stage, treading the cakewalk. Oh, if your poor father was alive today, he'd be a very proud man. Oh, thanks. Anyway, I don't want to be late for rehearsals first day in there. Quite right. Start as you mean to continue. First impressions and all that. Right, I'll see you all later. Tra. Hey, good luck. See you, Tra. Break an egg. <laughs> Oh, she's a lovely girl. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I promised the girls down at the bingo that I'd get Shane's autograph. I won't beat it. Oh, hang on, Julia. Well, me and Pete were sneaking down the theatre at lunchtime. We'll get his autograph for you. You want to see Shane Cochran? Two right hands, number one fan. Oh, I'll come with you. Oh, I think he's wonderful. And Shane can buy a ticket for the hospital raffle. First prize, this lovely teddy. So come on, you two. Hands in your pockets. Dig deep. And they've settled in OK? Oh, thank goodness for that. OK. OK, Mr Shackleton. Bye. Just checking that Cathy and the kids are OK. And? They're fine and they're safe. That's the most important thing. Right. Well, we'll let the Shackletons take care of things then, eh? We can start getting on with our own lives. What do you mean? Well, I mean, you've done your bit for them. She needed my help. Yeah, I know she did, and you did brilliantly for her. But you've got other things to worry about now. What things? Well, us. Me, you and the baby. But we've only just started out, haven't we? I mean, you can't go getting involved in other people's problems. Besides, you've got enough on your plate with me and Ruth. And we've got our own place to find. We've got the wedding to sort out. But if I can help other women, you know, women like Cathy, it, it felt good to be of some use. Man, leave it to the professionals, eh? People like the Shackletons. You've got a family to think of. I'll see you later. I've got to get back to work. All right. Ed. Look, it's not like Ali talking like that. Ah, somebody's been filling his head full of rubbish, haven't he? I don't know. Maybe we are in the wrong, eh? Maybe we should split the money. No way. That money's ours. End of story. Morning, all. My love. Hiya. Ooh. You can, I see. Hmm. Hmm. That must have set you back a bob or two. Who are you collecting for? It's not a collection, it's a raffle. It's to buy some incubators for the newborn babies. Oh. And this fella's first prize. Oh, he's lovely. Yeah, very nice, sir. Go ahead, then. Give us one. Oh, look. You're joking at me. 
One ticket. 25 pence for you. Oh, here you are. I'll have one and all. Um, there you are. It's 50p. 50p? You want to be ashamed of yourselves. You what? I'd sooner put the money in myself than accept it from the likes of you. It's true what the Crosbys and everyone else are saying about you, you tight-fisted so-and-sos. Suit yourself, love. God. Well, who else are we going to upset, eh? Hey, look, listen. She was after something for nothing. It's her type who sent begging letters. And now then, Sinbad. <laughs> Haven't you forgotten something, mate? Like what? Well, you've done everyone's windows except ours. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, Eddie. I won't be doing your windows anymore. Well, since when? Since you stitched Jean and Bing up over that lottery money. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm sorry, that's the way I feel about it. In fact, that's how everyone around here feels about it. So I'll see you around, eh? Yes, the legal chap here at the Citizens Advice Bureau gave me the lowdown. And from what I gather, we don't stand much of a chance. Oh. Apparently, because there wasn't a written agreement between ourselves and the banks, we can't actually prove there was a syndicate in operation. Oh, I see. He reckons that if we took it to court, we'd probably lose and face legal costs into the bargain. Oh, shame. But, Max, we are not beaten yet. Oh. I think it's time we were a little economical with the truth. Uh, you mean lie? No, no, not exactly. Just uh, see if we can't tie our friends, the banks, up in a few legal knots. Blind them with science, so to speak. Oh. <laughs> well, good luck. Well, thanks anyway. I know you're busy. Uh, very busy, yes. But I thought I ought to pop by and just keep you posted. Hello. Oh, Susanna. Uh, hi. Hello, Susanna. Max didn't tell me he was expecting you. Uh, because I wasn't, was I, Susanna? Um, just passing, are you? Yes, just passing. <laughs> Well, I must say, you're looking as radiant as ever. Thank you, David. Uh, David was just leaving, weren't you? Uh, yes, yes, just on my way. Well, nice to see you. Bye, David. Bye. <laughs> see you uh, Max, uh, just a quick word, eh? Uh, uh, one more minute. Uh, look, um, I don't wish to pry, but uh, does Patsy know about Susanna being here? <laughs> no. No, as I say, Susanna, she was just passing. Uh, problems with the children, I think. Oh, oh, I see. Mm. Mind you, it's no big deal. I don't think there's any reason to worry Patricia, is there? No, no, of course not. Uh, Mum's the word, then. <sighs> Thanks, David. Right. Well, uh, I'll see you later. See you. Right, Max. Where do you want me? What? To sit for lunch. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, right here. I'm all yours. Hello, Mandy. Is everything all right? You know, Kathy and the girls? Everything's fine, thanks to you. Oh, I just did what I could, you know. We're glad to help. But I must admit I did it because it was you asking. We are a little short on places. Listen, I was hoping I could have a word. What about? It's nothing to worry about. Just a small proposition you may be interested in. Oh, oh you better come in. Well, you seriously think I'd gotten to do better? Since when? Since Dill lined me up with a job out there. A job doing what? Running a club in a holiday complex. Tax-free salary, good working conditions. <sighs> Sounds great. And an apartment with three bedrooms. A bit over the top, isn't it, if you're on your own, like? Yeah, but just the right size for a family of three. Our family of three. You're asking me to go with you? Sarah, it's our chance for a fresh start. Well, how many times have I heard that? A proper fresh start. Miles away from here, from me mum and dad, from divvies like Jimmy Corkill. We can get on with our lives. <sighs> Just the three of us. I'll say one thing for you, Carl. You're full of surprises. What do you reckon? Uh, I don't know. I mean, five minutes ago, I thought me and you were finished for good. Now you're asking me to move across the world with you? Sarah, it's our chance to make things work. A golden opportunity. I'm going to have to think about this, Carl. But I'm serious about making it work. Anything that I've said, anything that's happened, it's in the past. When do you need to know? I've got to give Dilly a yes or no to Mona. To think about it, eh? See you later.
what you're offering me a job. You may have bent a few rules, but the trustees were very impressed with the way you handled things last week. For me, working for you? We need women like you, Mandy. Women with your experience. Well, what exactly would you want me to do? We want you to help women. Women like Kathy. Talk to them. Gain their trust and confidence. Pull on your own experiences. And then, if needs be, help them escape their domestic situation. <laughs> you want me to do all that? I saw you at work last week. Some of my colleagues have 20 years' experience and they wouldn't have coped as well as you did. Don't doubt yourself, Mandy. You're perfectly capable. Well, it's just I never expected this. You'd be invaluable. I know you would. And just think of the women you'd be helping. You know, well, it'd be nice to think I could make a difference. I've no doubt you'd make a big difference. Women's refuges desperately need workers like you. I'd be working in a refuge? Yes. This job's in our Bristol refuge. Bristol? A refuge for women and their children. Victims of domestic violence. Somewhere they can be looked after before finding accommodation. And, and would this involve me living in? Yes. It's a 24-hour job, but very rewarding. I know I'm asking a lot with you just having had the baby, but I just thought this would be perfect for you. But your policy is no men in the refuge. What about Simbad? As I say, I know it's a lot to consider. But do think about it. I just want you to make the best decision for you. Thank you. It's um, asparagus in cheese and garlic. Uh, got the chef to make it especially. Oh, it looks delicious and my favourite. <laughs> you shouldn't spoil me. Well, it's, uh, it's no big deal. On the contrary, I think it's sweet and remembering like that. I, um, I think we should uh, have a talk. <laughs> I thought we were talking. Yeah. Well, no, no, I mean, I think we should um, talk about us. Us? Well, you and me. More you than me. I prefer ours. It sounds much more interesting. Susanna, I'm being serious. And so am I, Max. Um, shall I have some more wine? <laughs> Max, hope you're not trying to get me drunk. Five, six, seven, eight, one. Sharper. Good. Step will change, step will change. Last turn. And lunge. Drag, drag, lunge. The finish. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> you in, Katie? Anyone want to buy an offer ticket? Oh, my God. <laughs> we can't even get our windows cleaned. Big deal. There's hundreds of window cleaners around. That's not the point. Simbad was a friend, a neighbour. It's not the first time someone's fallen out with their neighbours, love. What about our Lee, eh? He doesn't want to know us either. I'm starting to feel like some sort of outcast. That money was supposed to bring us happiness. It's brought us nothing but misery. I'll get it. I suppose you better come in. Thank you. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I thought I ought to do the decent thing and let you know that I've been to see a solicitor. Oh, God. It's all right, love. You will no doubt be interested to know that, according to the legal experts, Jean and I have a very strong case. Apparently, a claim similar to ours was successful in the civil courts only a month ago. My solicitor is extremely confident. Indeed, he can't wait to get started. Well, nothing's changed as far as we're concerned, Dave. That money's ours, and stays ours. Very well. As you seem content to let this unseemly business drag on, you leave me no alternative but to instruct my solicitor to proceed immediately. I'll see you in court. You still haven't told me why you've gone to all this bother. Well, we're friends, aren't we? <laughs> oh, Max, now that brain of yours works. Why are you making such a fuss of me? What are you after? I'm not after anything. Mm. 
It's because you're talking about going away. Oh, I see. So this is a goodbye lunch. <laughs> Quite the opposite. I don't want you to go. Oh. I see. I want you to stay. And, um, what's in it for me if I do stay? What do you mean? <laughs> I'd expect more than the occasional free lunch. I'd want you, Max, all to myself. You know how I feel? I spelt it out last week. You know that's impossible. I could never leave, Patricia. Every time we see each other, Max, the same old feeling. It just won't go away, will it? Face it, Max. We still love each other. Oh! oh. God! Look what I've gone and done. Oh, here, let me. Uh, no, no, that, that's enough. I was only trying your trousers. Yeah, well, I'd rather you didn't. Well, let's go to your office. You can take them off there or sponge them down. I don't think that would be a good idea. Can't trust you, Sam. Hmm? I think it's time I found you a taxi. Have it your own way, Max. I must remember to send you a postcard from Dubai. Oh, there's nothing like being in the wings of the theatre, is there? The smell of the war paint. You yeah, what? Of course, it's not like the good old days. Arthur Lucan and Rob Wilton. I've heard of that. They were real stars, playing to full houses every night. Of course, Milka Ray was on the stage as a strong man. The great Raimondo, strong as a lion. Oh, give me the telly any day. Come on, you lot. You're going to get me the sack, my first day and all. OK, keep your hair on. He only wants to see Shane Cochran. And get his autograph, like. Well, he's not here, is he? He's one of the stars. He doesn't rehearse yet. Well, he's not going to be very good if he doesn't rehearse. And I don't get a signed photo to wrap it down at the hospital. Well, you'll have to wait eight weeks until the show starts. And look, next time you come down, make sure you bought seats, eh? God, a bit of fame soon turned out, didn't it? She doesn't even want to know us now. Miss High and Mighty, but what's she like, eh? And I used to think she was such a nice, quiet girl. If a poor father could see her now, the little horror. She made us feel about as welcome as a cat in a dog's home. Hey. Seeing as we're in town, do you fancy going for that drink? Oh, just me and you? Yeah, we'll shake you off. No problem. What do you reckon? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you know what Julie is like. If she sees us going off together, I might get back to Ron. Oh, I see. So if you knew Ron wasn't going to find out, you'd be on for going for a drink with me? I didn't say that. Well, that's what it sounded like to me, and you don't escape my clutches that easily. <laughs> Next time, Beverly. Next time. Hiya. Alright. I'm going to be waiting there. I know. Also now. Didn't want to miss you. I knew you'd be finishing soon. Yeah. Right. So, what have you thought about what I said? <sighs> I've thought about nothing else. And? I'm sorry, Carl, but me and Becca aren't coming with you. Why? Do you want the truth? Yeah. I can't trust you. What? I'm sorry, but you've let me and Becca down too many times. Look, I've told you. I've changed. That's all in the past. <laughs> That's what you said before we moved in here. Then you go get mixed up with Corkill the Clown. Look, just give it a go. I can't. It's too much of a risk. Too far away from home. Sarah, I'm begging you. Just come with me. I'm sorry, Carl. As much as I love you, I don't know if it's ever going to work out between us. Well, I won't go then. I'll stay here with you and Becca. No. This is your big chance. We've had our chances and we've blown them. It's always bad, it, man. Is this the end? Just like it was the end last time and the time before. No, I think we've seen the last of each other, do you? Look, I know I've been a divvy. Let you down loads, like. But I still love you, you know. I know you do. I still love you. I'm gonna miss you, Carl. Right, well, I'll speak to you soon then. Make sure you do. And think hard about what I say. Hiya. Hello. What did she want? She was just thanking me for helping Kathy out. That's nice of her. 
and she made me an offer of a job. Doing what? Working in a women's refuge. Mandy, you are joking, aren't you? No, it's not a joke. Anyway, I know it would be impossible. It would be too difficult to sort out. It would mean moving to Bristol. Bristol? Working in one of those places? Man, I thought you'd had enough of all that, all that misery and heartache. I thought you'd left it all behind. I'll never be able to leave my past behind. It's part of me. Yeah, I know. But you've got to get on with your life. I know, but if I can use my experiences somehow to help other women stop what happened to me happening to them, they really need me. You're thinking of doing it? No. I don't know. Do you mean you don't know? Well, it would mean living in the refuge. Ruth being brought up in one of them places, no chance. And what about me? What about us? Well, that's why I know it would be impossible. They don't allow men to live in, so it would mean you getting a flat or something down there, so that's the end of that, isn't it? Well, I hope so. Look, man, I know you feel you can do some good, but we're never going to move forward if you're doing something like this. OK, so you said, so let's drop it. I know I can't do it, and that's that. But please, don't expect me to just become the little housewife and mother, because I want to start doing something with my life. And if I can use my experiences to help someone, then I will. 